Battle Royale, Keza Henshin. We have gotten to the end of the second Desire Grand Prix that we have seen so far. We have lost many riders and have seen our last three riders, which are Geet, Nago, and Buffer, beat the final boss. Oh, sorry, spoilers. Should have said that from the beginning, but I didn't say who won. I would hope you would have guessed that this was a spoiler video and discussion from the title, but we will move on anyway. I haven't really been able to make another Geats video in a while due to some issues, but as it's coming close to Christmas and the next round is underway, we shall do one final update before the end of the year. Surprisingly, a lot has happened in the second and third game, but a lot has also been confirmed, denied and explained but leaving many more questions in its wake. As of writing this video, we have started the third round since the start of the series, seeing many more riders chosen and most of them fall within one round. So, starting off strong. <laughs> but for now, let us go through the episodes quickly and discuss the possible features for our characters and for Kamen Rider Geats, with many more theories, of course. Starting with episode two, we see the results of the last Desire Grand Prix, with Ace now seen as a celebrity loved by all. Great, a narcissist. We love those. Also, we see how malleable the world truly is. We see the return of Kawa and Neon as they and many others are chosen to participate in the new round of the games. Good luck to you all, you're gonna need it. We find out later that amongst the new players are mums, students and old men, including Takahito Taira, the guy who interviewed Kawa before and of course our returning players Ace and Michinaga. In the first round, we go from 26 players to 7. Damn! That's a lot of terminations and paperwork. And as we find out later on, this means that they are now dead dead and can't return. We even lost Takahito, the penguin rider. We should have seen the signs, honestly. They were there. His wish to save his dying son? Nah, that's too emotional. Get rid of him. Though Ace acts to portray like the pathological liar we learn him to be, he does end up saving Takahito's son, donating money anonymously to his surgery. So he does have a heart. But we get an interesting last shot as the man in black and white watches Ace from somewhere digital and full of screens, asking, what are you after? Ooh. This is soon to be revealed to be the Game Master. Rushing into episode 3, right at the start we are reminded of our lost penguin and by the looks of this, we are just counting down through the season to the last player each game, just crossing them off one by one. We see some insight into our characters, Kawa is recounting the events of what happened the day before. We also see Neon's situation at home, an angry mother and strict rules, no wonder she wants to leave all the time. We also see Ace looking at the city, saying, here I am, I'll find you. Uh, be this mysterious person you are looking for? We do find out, but we will touch on that later. Later. And after a little scoffle at a cafe, the next round starts with an alliance between Michinaga and Kanato, which ends in a zombie bite. Yikes, what a confusing and emotionally investing couple of episodes, and it only gets worse. Not only did Kanato get infected by the zombies, don't really care about him, he's a meanie, but also Neon, as she spirals in into a pit of despair, thinking this is the end. However, while she pushes through to the end and gets reset to no zombie infection, on the other hand, Kanato, who wishes for all humans to be gone due to an accidental injury, revels in the chaos and uses it as a chance to attack the others. This led to his ultimate retirement at the end of the round. And another one bites the dust. I think that should be the theme of the show, by the way. Forget trust last. Another one bites the dust fits better. Ooh, 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 ooh. Moving on to episode five, we get a bear rider Aww. called Punk Jack, a DGP worker to even the odds in a pair game. Pairings end up as Ace and Neon. They pass with flying colors, of course. Kawa and Michinaga. They, they struggle, and Mario ends with Punk Jack. They also Ooh. struggle. Mario's past is revealed and he cheats the system with a swap card to pair swap for Michinaga. The next episode, he is rightly betrayed. His true nature is revealed as devious and cunning, and Michinaga swaps again at the last minute to have his original partner back, leaving Mario to lose the round and get retired. He was a bad sheep. I called it. Serves him right though. Episode seven, it's another game for another round. Try not to kick the bucket or bite the dust this time, guys, as it's kick the can. <laughs> Do you get the joke? can not bucket anyway only four of our riders are still here neon michinaga kewa and ace with the boss of the game in this round the stakes are high as in a past game this boss killed everyone so pressure's on 
but in this episode we get to know a bit more about Ace's origins. He's played this from AD, which is Anno Domini in the Year of the Lord. So in other words, a long as time ago. He is old, older than me, but he's still as crafty using Kewa as a pawn to get stronger. I mean, Kewa is too trusting, but I think he's finally had enough because in the next episode, his older sister Sara is kidnapped and in a very brave but stupid attempt, he goes to save her. I mean, they win the round, or it seems like it at the time, I guess, and he gets retired? Sorry, I'm confused. He's done? He's out? I did not expect that one, honestly. Also, we find out about what really happened to Sara and Kewa's parents. It's a lot more traumatic than we thought. Anyway, Kewa is in fact done, retired, and gone back to his real life before the games. But inspired by his drive, in the next episode, the others, Neon, Michinaga, and Ace continue to fight for the actual end of this game, having to hatch eggs with upgrades in them. Ace gets an awesome bear upgrade, and I love its eyes, its weapon, and also how yellow it is. It's so so cute! He wins yet another Grand Prix with this upgrade, leaving the others broken and disheartened as they disappear and return to their normal lives. I kind of feel sorry for them. But we also see a humorous final scene as the staff of the DGP consider the repercussions of Ace's wish. Which we find out in the next episode is that Ace wants all the staff to be his family. Two things. One, kinda sweet as it's revealed how he's been looking for his mum. But two. He was wanting to date this girl at the beginning of the show, flirting with her, and the wish all this time was to become siblings with her? There's so much wrong with this. Or he never actually cared for her that way, and it's just him using his conniving lying persona of the fox to get closer to the team. Hmm, interesting. It's also revealed this time that the Game Master, the one choosing the participants pulling the strings, is in fact Garori. Who saw that one coming? Honestly, not me, but it makes sense. They have the same coat. Michinaga returns to the games along with Ace for the start of the next DGP, surrounded by all the new riders who, again, with no experience, get slaughtered. We meet new riders Win as Kamen Rider Punk Jack, Itetsu as Kamen Rider Kalo, and Yuki as Kamen Rider Letta. Neon also returns surprisingly at the end with an awesome upgrade. You know what? I have come to learn one thing through the show. Don't get too familiar with some of the riders. They are here for a second and gone the next. For example, Yuki is in literally one episode and then she dies. No more Kamen Rider letter, that's for sure. Win is revealed to be in cahoots with Garori, the game master, to get rid of Geet. Ooh, mystery and betrayal. I love it. And then episode 11. What an episode. Kewa is back as a civilian and sucked into a labyrinth with others. Good to see him back, but he's different. The next round starts in a pocket dimension, I guess you could say. Jamato created, and the riders, paired with one of the civilians, has to protect them from the Jamato. But also, they henshined and started speaking? Huh, that is just unsettling. We find out Samori and Punk Jack pair are cheating, while the game master reveals some worries as he didn't order them to do that. Hmm, who may I ask? And more secrets are unveiled as he rings a greenhouse full of baby Jamatos growing from the ceiling. I knew it! They have something to do with the Jamato. I knew it. Here's a weird theory though that's just popped into my head. Maybe Geet's mother is the nutrient for the tree. I don't know why that popped into my head, but I'll explain later. We almost see the death of Grandpa Owl also, which is just heartbreaking, but also we get a cool lucky lottery upgrade that allows Geats to use boost at both ends. And he just uses his bike as a weapon at one point. That's very Yakuza. I'm now just waiting for the karaoke scene next. Whew, after that intense episode, it's finally time to move on to my favorite bit. The theories, you know I love my theories. So the coin situation. I said in the past that it will be a representation of Ace's characteristics in the show, a Caesar coin, so a dictator character, with all the power and he will soon be betrayed. But due to specific facts of his origin being shared finally, it makes me think this could be a keepsake of the person they are trying to find, his mother, as a way to remember and search for them. But I still think the Caesar character in Ace is still very possible, or the fact that he will be betrayed. If you think about it, he is currently being betrayed trade by his own family, the game master literally saying get rid of him. So that explains the intro with Sumeri pointing a gun at him instead. Also we find out the reason he can't just wish to see his mother, the wish isn't accepted. We have found the extent of the wish barrier everyone, and also explains why Geats is investigating the games so thoroughly, and even becoming family with them. And his next wish is to become one of the staff. He has a plan. <laughs> next theory. I've mentioned before that for my ultimate theory, I think that Kewa is the actual main hero 
hero of the show, and Geats will act as the main villain or rival for his lying ways. But due to Kawa's early departure from the game, I am now unsure. I hope he returns to continue the games, as we see he is involved with the Gates X Revice movie crossover. He is apparently Kamen Rider Tokun again, but also in the preview for episode 12, he has his ninja buckle and desire driver in hand. It's fair to say he will be back pretty soon. But also something I want to bring up with Kawa, he's different upon going back to mundane life. He's less optimistic and more down in the dumps about his luck, and doesn't want Tanuki Ryman anymore. He's changed. He hasn't gone back to his usual happy-go-lucky self, and this is very clear in episode 11 where he just slumps around, worried about his future and overwhelmed with just how much bad luck he has. The game has returned him, but changed him ultimately, maybe just because of all the trauma from the games, and his body still remembers it, but it's interesting. This is actually referenced in episode 11, where Ace explains if you are sent back as a retired rider, you lose your will for your original wish. You lose the desire and drive for it. Kinda sad, I wanna see how Kanata and Morio are. Have they become nicer due to fighting the tension off? Or worse, as they didn't get their wish? Maybe if any of them were to return, they would end up as the anti-hero or antagonist due to their unfinished business. But ultimately, they lose their will or drive for the wish, which is just sad. Gosh, these are just rolling off the top of my head, these theories. The real antagonist is the game itself, the Desire Grand Prix. They know more than they let on, have a system that allows dreams to become reality. But how come nobody has wished for the games to stop? Well, apparently there is no limits to a wish and what it can accomplish, but Ace's original wish to see his mother was rejected. The Game Master can accept or deny a wish. This is shown when Ace wins the previous game and they debate about the repercussions of it. Also, the Game Master states he didn't tell them to do that, referring to either the Jumata becoming riders or the gardener in the greenhouse, meaning he has more control than he lets on. He knows the ins and outs, and the game is the origin of the Jumato. It's the game, as I stated in the first episode discussion. I don't know what the purpose of the game is now, though. Before, it was to fight and protect humanity from the Jumato. But now, if the source of the Jumato is the game itself, and the Game Master and the greenhouse, why is it happening? Is it a Squid Game thing where they fight and die for an unknowing audience? Is it a culling of humanity? And on top of that, the Jumato are learning and evolving, changing through each round and becoming stronger. They henchined! What will our riders do? Well, I hope they don't bite the dust. And last one of the video, as mentioned before, maybe Ace's mother is the nutrient for the tree. The tree being what the Jumato are growing from, maybe? And why, you may ask? Why did I come up with such an awful theory? The reason why is because Ace mentioned that the wish he made may have been detrimental to the game and how it works. Hence why his wish to see his mother was rejected. Why would seeing his mother be a detriment to the game itself? Maybe because her presence is what keeps the game alive and working, the constant nutrients for the Jumato to grow by the army. Or maybe it would reveal too much about the games. But why his mum? Is she special in some way? Maybe an alien, god, celestial being? Why her specifically? And if Geats is as old as he stated before, how is he still so young? Maybe he is also an alien or god or celestial being, or being in the games for so long has kept him young. But the alien thing, I mean that would explain the f***ing <laughs> alien looking Jamato things. Look at it! Just look at it! Ew! And this could also explain why Ace is so confident and able as he is. Going back to the Jamato though, what's with the Jamato riders, the greenhouse, the weird Jamato creator, and also the passed away rider ID cords? And are the past riders food for the Jamato, or are they the Jamato specifically? And are we fighting past friends? Also, what's up with Neon's dad? How is he connected to all of this? I don't know. Help me. Help me. Honestly, I have loved where this is going, except for the death so far. That can go away. But it's been really interesting, the world changing with each wish, more lore being revealed of Ace's history and the game's origin. The only thing I'm disappointed with is the riders you can't fully enjoy and appreciate, as they are there one episode and gone the next, which is a shame. Bring on more episodes though, I demand to know more. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, I hope you are as hyped as I am, and I'll chat to you next time. Keza henshin, matane.